took a trip to Nashville, Tennessee to run a marathon, but of course I was also on the hunt for good food. During my first day in the city, I ate at the Silver Sands Cafe, which is a classic spot for southern cuisine and meat and threes. I also dined at Ralph and Daughters, a popular fine dining restaurant that offers beautiful pastas and innovative new American dishes. One thing is certain, I ate pretty damn well in Nashville. Today I have arrived to Nashville, Tennessee, which is very exciting for me because this is a brand new city that I've never been to and a brand new state that I've never been to. I'm primarily here to run the marathon on Saturday and I am scared to death about it. <sighs> this is not gonna be good. People say I'm very optimistic and positive and that's true. I'm very positive that this race will completely suck. The forecast right now calls for some very hot and uncomfortable temperatures during race day and I don't do the best with heat with regards to running. Regardless, I'm still gonna make the best of it. However, I'm not here just to run. I, of course, wanna explore and eat the best food Nashville has to offer. Today is just my first day in this amazing city, and I've already eaten some incredible food, seen some awesome things, and I'm having a great time. This day began very early, back in NYC at LaGuardia. I woke up at about 4.30, went to the airport, got coffee, and boarded my 7.25 a.m. flight to Nashville. After landing, I got my bag and took an Uber to my hotel, but it was too early to check in. However, I was at least able to drop off my luggage. With that taken care of, food was my next priority. Because of the marathon, I had to adjust my dining schedule so that I would be eating sooner than I normally would. Plus, I had a 5 p.m. dinner reservation, so having an early lunch seemed appropriate. As a result, I walked to the Silver Sands Cafe, a soul food restaurant that's been around for over half a century. Honestly, from the outside, it's not the most inviting looking place, but that notion couldn't have been further from the truth once I stepped into the restaurant. The staff were incredibly nice and friendly, providing me with a perfect welcome to Nashville. Silver Sands is a Meat and Threes institution. Meat and Threes is a sort of southern diner tradition consisting of a meal that includes a main course and three sides. Silver Sands serves some true southern and soul food classics, including dishes that I don't see as often like pig feet, beef liver, and neck bones. After receiving my order, it was placed in what looked like a garbage bag. It couldn't have been more unrepresentative of the quality of my lunch because as I was about to discover, the food was fantastic. For my main, I went with the baked chicken and I loved it. The meat was so juicy and the skin had a ton of flavor. One of my sides was the mac and cheese and it was a real winner. It was nice and cheesy and perfectly cooked. In addition, I enjoyed a serving of the creamy yams and I loved them as well. All told, my lunch at the Silver Sands Cafe set me back $14.75, which I thought was a good deal. With my stomach adequately filled, it was time for some sightseeing, so I headed to the Tennessee State Museum. The museum is a completely free institution that showcases the history of the state. Simply put, I couldn't have picked a better first activity for my trip to Nashville. The museum expertly showcased seemingly every historical aspect of Tennessee. I particularly enjoyed the exhibit about the Civil War. The area was highly divided with the eastern counties of the state harboring pro-Union sentiments despite the fact that Tennessee was in the Confederacy. I also enjoyed learning about the three presidents from the state who were Andrew Jackson, James K. Polk, and Andrew Johnson. However, I began to feel the effects of my early morning wake up. Really enjoying this museum. It's very interesting, but my god, I am tired. I'm really feeling it now. Honestly, the first thing I'm going to do after this museum is an emergency espresso. I could have spent far more time at the institution, but my need for coffee was urgent. Plus, I still had a lot to get done before my 5 p.m. dinner reservation. So I did a quick Google search for the nearest place serving caffeine, and I found myself at the Nashville Farmer's Market. The place is like a food hall, but I didn't have time to wander. I made a beeline to Farm City Coffee, where I ordered a double espresso. When that espresso hit my palate, it felt like I was being embraced by an angel. I feel like a new person now after that espresso, but now it's time to pick up my packet for the race. 
after getting caffeinated, I had a bit of a walk ahead of me to the Music City Center where I was able to pick up my packet and materials that I would need to run the race on the weekend. Once that was accomplished, I rushed back to my hotel to check in. However, I was on a budget for my trip and I was actually staying at a motel called the Nights Inn. Just checked in. My room is uh, not bad. It's actually a lot bigger than I thought it'd be. I mean, the lighting's not the greatest. Uh, it's a little warm. I'll figure out how to use the AC later, but I can't dawdle. I've got that 5 p.m. dinner reservation. I'm just here to use the washroom, charge my phone a little bit, drop some stuff off, and then I'm gonna head straight to the restaurant. This day is seriously nonstop, but so far Nashville is uh, proving to be pretty nice. Despite the fact that I was staying at a motel, the night's in wasn't bad. My room was pretty sizable and comfy, and the establishment even served a complimentary breakfast. Now it wasn't anything special, but it was free, and it even had a really neat pancake making machine, which I definitely need now for my apartment. All right, on to the restaurant. I made my way to the beautiful Germantown neighborhood of Nashville to dine at Ralph and Daughters. James Beard award-nominated chef Philip Krajak opened his restaurant in 2012 to immediate success. The following year, Bon Appetit named Ralph and Daughters as one of the 10 best new restaurants in America. I really enjoyed the look of the establishment, which featured beautifully exposed brick, wood accents, and long communal tables. The menu featured a number of appetizing and seasonally inspired plates, including a selection of handmade pastas, which the restaurant is renowned for. Beverage-wise, there were some good options from wine to cocktails, but since I was going to be running a marathon soon, I just stuck with water. For my first course, I went with the Cheka Mariti pasta with Kampot pepper and cultured butter. It was an absolute masterpiece. The pasta was perfectly cooked and incredibly rich. I also just loved the nice punch of flavor from the pepper. The dish was a complete success and it really reminded me of a cacio e pepe. It was just so perfect in its simplicity. However, the only issue with the dish was that it equated to be a pretty small portion. Now, I did see other diners consuming the bread, and it looked pretty good, so I spontaneously ordered some for myself. It was a sliced half loaf of sourdough bread with seaweed butter. Ordering it was a wise choice as it helped fill me up and it was delicious. The bread was nice and fresh with a fluffy center and crispy crust, but it was the salted seaweed butter that took the sourdough to another level. The butter was so smooth and it had a perfectly balanced seaweed flavor. In fact, it was so silky that I could just dip the bread into the butter. Plus, the sourdough was the perfect vessel to mop up the rich butter sauce for my pasta course. My experience at Ralph and Daughters was certainly off to a great start. Next up was my main course, which was mackerel with oxtail, savoy cabbage, and lobster roe. It was a beautiful plate with a seemingly eclectic assortment of ingredients, but it worked. The fish was so tender with a pleasant and crispy skin. I also thought that the sauce the mackerel was in really complemented the fish nicely and added a bit of sweetness. Now the cabbage on the side was pretty interesting as well. It was stuffed with rice and other components making for some delightful bites to combine with the fish. Overall, it was a very satisfying plate of food. I also have to mention that I found the conversation between one of the bartenders and a couple of patrons pretty amusing as it was a discussion on the cities that provided the best tap water. Yeah, there are definitely some hipsters in Nashville. Anyways, with everything finished, it was time to move on to dessert. Looking at the dessert menu, the offerings are on the simpler side. I decided to go with a mascarpone ice cream with figs and breadcrumbs. Taste-wise, the dish was very pleasant, but texturally, unfortunately, that was another story. The ice cream, while nice, was stodgy and sort of glue-like in texture. While I love the flavor of figs, but having such large bites of the fruit on top of the ice cream was just a bit too much. Don't get me wrong, the flavors were enjoyable, but overall the dish could have been a bit better. Still, the less than perfect dessert didn't diminish the absolute pleasure that I experienced at Ralph and Daughters. 
with my dessert finished, it was time for the bill, which totaled to $76.48, but with my tip, I spent about 92 bucks. Oh, that was such a good dinner. I really enjoyed that. After such an intense day where it felt like I was just running from one thing to another, there is no better way to end it than sitting back and enjoying some good food in a fine restaurant. And Rolf and Daughters is certainly a good restaurant. And now I'm gonna head back to the hotel and get some sleep. My first day in Nashville was certainly a good one, but my adventure was just getting started.